You know what they say, if you make one wildly unpopular move and have to walk it back, why not make a hundred more? <laughs> back in October of 2022, Celsus, the company behind Clip Studio Paint, announced to uproarious booze and thrown tomatoes that it would be a subscription gating all future updates past 2.0. And if you ever let your subscription lapse for any reason, you would lose access to update features that you had already paid for. Uh, they walked this back somewhat after the uproar, of course. Introducing a perpetual license for 2.0, which I'd like to point out that you would still need a subscription to receive updates for. However, the rest has still gone through. Nobody's happy with this. <laughs> it's not the worst, most egregious thing they ever could have done, though, as with the perpetual license, they fall into a line of companies releasing new versions for a flat fee every few years, as has happened since the 90s. So that's not surprising. That being said, Clip's gotten into a bit of a new controversy. In the tech industry's ever-increasing efforts to curb piracy, Clip Studio has recently released a new strategy to crack down on people daring to use their program offline. The program now verifies your license online every 24 hours, and if you cannot, for some reason, access the internet every 24 hours, you end up boosting booted back to the free trial of the program you paid for, which lacks a pretty huge number of features that most of us use constantly. So if your power is out after a hurricane and you really need commissions badly to pay the HVAC guy to suck the water out of your basement, sucks to be you! <laughs> Tough luck, according to Clip Studio. Now, some not familiar with that situation would be like, but Maple! If your power is out, how are you using a tablet? To which they say, you can charge a laptop or a tablet off of a vehicle battery and use it just fine. But even if you could plug in a modem to the vehicle, if a phone line is down somewhere, which is common after bad weather events, your hopes of accessing the internet are pretty much zilch. <laughs> Needless to say, this is not curved piracy in the slightest. I don't know why the tech industry keeps doing this, but they seem hell-bent on introducing features that don't actually curb piracy at all, but just make for a worse end-user experience for people who are using the program legitimately. Have a look at video games in the last few years. Like, all sorts of them come with these DRMs stacked upon DRMs stacked upon DRMs, and... It goes from, you could have a top-of-the-line computer and it would still lag. You would still get frame rate clipping because these DRMs are ridiculously heavy. On that note, I find it hilarious that hackers on Reddit are already claiming that they've hacked this form of DRM, in fact. <laughs> All this does is incentivize legitimate users who would have otherwise been glad to buy the product to pirate the product in the end, which leads to Clip losing even more revenue. Which is not that great for Clip, to be honest. Um, I think this is a bad move. I genuinely think this is a really bad move. I think this is silly. I think people should start getting backup programs for when all of the tech industry does this nonsense. Um, Paint Tool Sai is a one-time deal. It's not as robust as Clip Studio Paint, but it is still really good. Um, there's Fire Alpaca, which is free. A lot of people really love that one. I've never used it. But it's always good to have a backup, just in case the tech industry gets too big for its britches. And, you know, I can't... recommend piracy? But, you know, if you are hell-bent on it, there's ways to figure out how to do it, too. <laughs> like, 
we don't pirate in this house. Never. But, <laughs> you know, it's an option. Especially if the companies keep doing this. Like, this is... I don't even know if I would call it greed. I think it's just stupidity. And people on Tumblr and Twitter are not very happy about it. Like, you can search up Clip Studio Paints on Twitter and their replies are full of nonsense about this. Anyway, that being said, Clip is now offering refunds for anyone who bought the 2.0 version and returning them to the last version 1 update. So if you're upset about that to the point where you really don't want 2.0 anymore, or you anticipate that you'll have problems with this kind of DRM and want to get your money back and wait until they fix it if they do, um, you can go right ahead. I bought the Perpetual 2.0 and I'll probably keep it, but like, do write into Clip Paint, Clip Support page, and let them know your thoughts on this move. I certainly will be, even though I'll probably keep the 2.0. I just. I really like the shading assist feature. I think it's great. I've taken to doing the shading assist, screenshotting what the output is, and then using that as a reference and just getting rid of the entire shading assist. And then I'll put that next to my current drawing and use that as just like a reference on getting a rough idea on where the colors are supposed to go. I think that works really well. <laughs> it is a very useful feature. That being said, I'll leave a link in the description below to their support website. And all that being said, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit short this time, but, you know, there's not really much to cover here. <laughs> Take care of yourselves and each other, and if you liked what you saw here today, maybe consider hitting that subscription button and the bell icon to be notified of future uploads. I do plenty of art-related content and some gaming-related content, so what's the harm? Give me a try. <laughs> and bye for now!